I'm glad all of you are tuning in today because we're going to be talking about relationship issues during quarantine. I'm going to give a few seconds just to see if there's anybody else who wants to join. So just mind you, if you have any questions, we're going to save Q&A towards the end. But again, this is short and sweet. It's a little nugget. Um, if you need any other support, please feel free to contact the Center for Work and Family Life. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start. So did you know, as I was doing this research, it was very interesting. A recent survey of the American Psychological Association reports that many individuals in the U.S. are experiencing heightened levels of stress as a result of the pandemic, which are closely tied to economic unemployment. If you're feeling this, can I get an amen? Yes, it is stressful. And this was pulled from applying relationship science to evaluate how COVID-19 pandemic may impact couples. So this is true. It's not in your imagination. It is real. And you know what? During this pandemic, not only are we kind of worried about the future, the uncertainty, we're actually spending a lot of time with family and our spouses, our boyfriend, girlfriends, whatever, our significant others, 24 seven. And you know what? We're getting a little cabin fever and you know, depending on where you live, limited space. So people are, you know, probably getting on your nerves, which is normal. Um, so you're not alone. Um, I'm gonna go to the next slide which is strategies. So I know this, again, never been in a pandemic. I'm just kind of learning as everybody else and going through research articles and even they don't know because they've never been in a pandemic, but what we know for sure as far as we get back down to the basics. So some strategies are effective communication, responsive support, and opportunities for growth. So again, effective communication is saying how you feel, but not accusatory. Um, and again, not pretending that there's an elephant in a room, meaning don't avoid conflict. So it's direct engagement problem solving, which also motivates partners to improve. So again, it's difficult, but once we learn how to effectively communicate, so remember, I just wanna say this, if you and your, cup, and your spouse, whoever you're with, if you had poor communication prior to the pandemic, you brought it into the pandemic and then it was multiplied. So again, the amygdala hijack gets in where you stress. Some people are losing their jobs. Some people are teaching their kids at home. It's like we have all these spinning plates and we have to learn how to problem solve together. The other thing is responsive support. So that means people feel more connected and supported by partners when they care, like you check in, like, what can I do to help you? When I'm working with clients, I say, you know, ask for what you need, like, how can I help you? Or just listening um, is really important. Just to let somebody talk and not interrupt is, is really wonderful. I always say when I work with clients, you know, I love in and out because they validate what you say. You know, they don't interrupt like when you're placing your order, like I want to double double with her and they interrupt you. They just let you see your order and then they say, is that correct? And then you say, yes, that is correct. Or if you want a double double no tomato and they say double double tomato onion, you're like, is that your order? No, I don't want the tomato. And they'll say it again until they, you feel validated. They heard you. And at the end of the day, quoting Oprah, everybody wants to be validated. Everybody wants to be heard. So, you know, that's really important. And with that is opportunities for growth. This pandemic, I must say, is giving opportunity for growth in so many areas, right? In your job, because um, you have relationship with people in your job, right? Your kids, if you have kids at home, um, people who are sheltering with you at home, um, there are different many relationships. So with that and changes, right? Because this is, this is not normal. This is not business as, user, as usual. So these is like, how can I do this different and adapt? And that's kind of where resiliency kind of takes place. And I know that a lot of people are talking about resiliency. And I think I have that on the next slide. So shall we move to the next slide? Any questions, anybody nodding heads? Because I can't see. So if you can relate, if you can do a thumbs up, either with your emoji, because I want to be able to 
provide information. So that would be really helpful as a guide. So again, I also want to say, feeling like Groundhog Day. Did you guys ever see Groundhog Day with Bill Murray? He gets up, he does the same thing. But the coolest thing, what I learned about that movie, even though his day was the same thing, he started doing things, which is super cool. And that goes back to my other slide in terms of changing, making opportunities for change. So one day he started doing ice sculpting with the with that uh, saw, that electrical saw, and then one day he decided to take piano lessons, but it was like the same day, but he was expanding. So again, the monotony, we, you know, that is from um, Dr. Uh, Chris um, Kraft, who says that that causes of numbness of feelings related to dealing with stressful and uncertain times. So we have to make sure we don't get into Groundhog Day. And Dr. Chris, Kraft is a psychologist and an expert at um, Hopkins Medicine. So he, he talks about relationships and it's true because we do, you know, you get in a rut. I mean, we get in a rut anyways prior to pandemic. So we have to do something to spice up the relationship, maybe go on date night. So this is no different, it's just from home. So here's the thing, what are some strategies? Create a routine, self-care is so important. Set time for yourself before you start work, whether it's in the morning or at night. For me, I, and Susan knows this because I talk about this all the time, um, I'm not telling you to get up at five in the morning, but I get five out of the morning because my clients, I start work at seven, but I get up and there's nobody up. It's just me so I can tend to whatever needs I need. For some people, it's in the evening when they have kids before, because it's quiet. So if you just see the quiet, it's great because you get your grounding. The other thing is exercise. You know, exercise is so important. We need to keep moving, whether it's high intensity, like cardio, if you're doing like, because I do a lot of cardio, or just walking. Um, we are not designed to be sitting in our chairs. We have to get up and move. As long as you're moving, you're good. Um, and then it creates wonderful endorphins and chemicals in our body. That's why, because then we're not like a Debbie Downer and we're staying engaged and we're staying mindful. And the other thing is diet, okay? I've put on the COVID-15. I don't know if any of you have put on the COVID-15, but I love my carbs and I can't, I have to be mindful of that because then if I start eating, then I don't wanna work out, then I don't wanna do anything. I just wanna be like lazy, which is okay, but I don't wanna do it all the time because then I'm not productive and then I don't feel good, right? So then if you have that kind of you know, frame of mind, how are you gonna be with your partner? You're just gonna be really irritable and grouchy and you're not gonna to wanna to have conversations with them. You're just, it's just not gonna work. So we have to make sure we take care of ourselves. It's very, very, very important. And throughout the day, it's okay to take breaks. A lot of people are having a hard time with this because they feel like they're being pulled like taffy and in so many directions. It's okay to take a break. I can't stress it enough. I feel like doing like a chat. It's okay to take a break. It's okay to take, I give myself permission to take a break. We have to, this is not business as usual. We are working from home. Like if you come into my house, I have kids doing homeschooling. I got my spouse doing his thing. This is not normal. So I get up, I give myself a break. I go outside, sometimes I stretch. Whatever resonates with you. And the taking a break is sometimes good to connect with your spouse. Like, hey, how are you doing? Checking in, always checking in and seeing if you're, you are okay, he's okay, whoever's okay. Because again, it's relationship. So the other thing that I wanna say too, in terms of these things is good communication, right? And not always making assumptions. Being good communicator is listening. And just listening and to hear what the other person says and then once they finish then you can respond but listening is so important because we even find out things even more so when we listen the other thing is that responsive support you know just to hear I'm, i got you you know that back i got your back and just with that we at the center for work and family life we got your back please call us um we are here for you so that number is 213-821-0800.
And again, um, you also have that other resource for Lyra. That is a number there, or you can go online. And then also to another big, big help is reaching to your healthcare providers. You know, so you could ask for a referral to speak to a therapist. You need to ask for help. It's so important because we can't do this alone. And I know it's a cliche, like we're in it together, but we got you back. The Center for Work and Family Life, we have you and we support you. Um, and with that someone's, said. Someone's um, asking, what is Lyra? Oh, so Lyra, thank you for my question. Who is that from? That is from, I can't see, let me see. That is from Bridget. Thank you, Bridget, for your question. So Lyra is a benefit for those employees. I'm gonna get the flyer so you can see. So this is Lyra and, oops, there we go. Sorry, <laughs> my graphic is bad, but it's basically, um, there's no, there's no co-pays and it's for USC PPO and USC Trojan Care EPO. So if you have the PPO or the EPO, you can call them and you can do therapy. So it's telehealth and you get 25 sessions. They'll do an assessment um, and you can connect with them. Whereas the Center for Work and Family Life, we provide um, solution focused therapy. You get 10 sessions and it's free and it's confidential. We pride ourselves in that. It's strictly confidential. I hope that answered your question, Bridget. Um, any other questions? Don't see any as of yet. Let me see, let me open it up for, now she Three. says, thank you. You're most welcome. Thank you for asking. All right. No more questions? I see three. I thought three of them. Let's see. Anyone have any questions? Okay, that was from Miss Susan. And we can miss it. Thank you. You're most welcome. And remember, if you have any questions after we finish this presentation, you have the number. I'll say it again. It's 213-821-0800. Thank you, everyone. Yay, thank you. Bye-bye.